Hey everyone, it's Tlor, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite mechanics in the game, a little controversial to some, and that is ramming. So I use ramming a lot to really help turn the tide of the game. It's very effective against smaller ships since you have to roll over the number of masts that they have. But what if I were to tell you there was a way that you could ram and guarantee getting damage done with that? So we're going to look at some options here and really just see what you can do to make your rams more effective. So the first one that we're going to look at is Capitaine Arrigeur, who is French. He's really just an example of this type of an ability, but there's a few of them out there that say, if this ship succeeds at a boarding party, choose two of the following. Eliminate a crew, take a treasure, or eliminate a mast. Now normally when you succeed at a boarding party, you either eliminate a crew or take a treasure. So this one lets you choose two of these, so you can either stack both of those up, and it also throws in an extra one into the mix where you can eliminate a mast. Now, this is not directly ramming, but after ramming, either person can declare a boarding party. So this can help you if you've got a large ship and some extra boarding bonuses that you can use to really help seal the deal. You can eliminate that mast and either take a treasure or eliminate a crew to really put through some extra damage. Now, this is not necessarily the best way. It's not guaranteed damage. You do still have to succeed at the boarding party, but it's one thing that you can look at. Another option that we have is uh, this ship cannot be shot at by ships within Esifer. So this is a relatively expensive ability. As you can tell, this is a one mass ship worth nine points. But it's very powerful because after you ram, now you're within S and they can't shoot you back. So you can just sit there with your cannons and shoot them. Now, they could move away. But uh, if you place yourself, your ships correctly in such a way so that they don't move away or move out of that S range, you're at least going to protect some of your ships that way. Now this is pretty expensive. I don't necessarily recommend this uh, necessarily for this strategy, although I have used it to great effect such as taking this ship and copying it onto something like a 10 mast using Davy Jones and now you have this gigantic ship that can't be shot at. So that's something that's fun, although it's a bit pricey to be able to use. Another option is to look at a ship like La Rosario. And this is a quite a bit cheaper and it's a little bit faster. This ship cannot be pinned. So this is a little bit unassuming, but after you ram an opposing ship and resolve the boarding party and everything, then the ship that rammed becomes pinned. So that means that you're not going to be able to move away. There are a few ships like this that say this ship cannot be pinned. So when that happens, after I'm done ramming, the next turn, I'm able to move again. So now I can move one S segment back and then move another S segment in and I can ram them again. So that lets you ram them every single turn. It's kind of fun, a little bit niche, but it's, it's fun in a swarm ramming kind of strategy, which is what we're going for. So if you have a few extra points in your strategy for this, you can throw in a few of these just to continue to put on the ramming damage. Again, you still have to roll over the number of masts, so if you're fighting a 6 or a 10 mast, you're going to need some way to guarantee some damage before you really start taking them down due to ramming. Alright, so you remember that pinning? Well, we're going to look at Captain Jack Hawkins that lets you move and shoot, which is a 3-point ability. So you're picking up for only one extra point. On the turn the ship is pinned, eliminate one crew from the enemy ship. So while it's not doing guaranteed damage, you are able to remove crew in addition to all of your ramming damage that you're trying to do with this. So the move and shoot lets you move, ram, do your damage, as well as shoot all in the same action. Not to mention that when you're pinned, you're going to be able to wipe out one of their crew in addition to anything that you would wipe out from a boarding party. Now, because of how this works, this will stack with the crew, the ships that we're going to primarily look at here. Now, there are a few more than these, I just don't have them in my collection, but these are going to be good examples of what we're trying to do. And this one says, on the turn, this ship is pinned, eliminate one crew and one mast from the rammed ship. So this means that if you're ramming even a 10 mast, you're going to eliminate a mast with this ship. And there's several of these right here. So that means on my turn, if all of these are able to ram, I'm going to guarantee doing three masts of damage on top of making my ram rolls. And as I'm doing more damage, those ram rolls are going to become easier and easier. So if I were to, now I know the faction doesn't line up, but if I were to put Captain Jack Hawkins on USS Maryland, when I ram, I would eliminate a mast potentially from the ram. 
I would also eliminate two crew, one from each ability, and one mast from this ability, all just from ramming. And not to mention, there's no rolling that's done for either of these abilities. They're just eliminating that mast and that crew. So that can be really powerful. Even if they have a canceller, they can really only cancel one of these at a time. And these are very inexpensive ships that you're going to be able to pick up very quickly. So USS Maryland is one of the, the big ones. You probably want to ram with this one uh, towards the beginning because you're also going to be able to shoot if you put a captain on here. And with those twos for cannons, you can do your ram damage for one, potentially. You can do your pin damage from the ability for another one. And then you have a pretty good chance of being able to eliminate more mass with both of those cannons. So for eight points, this is a great inclusion into a ramming fleet where you're going around ramming opposing ships. So you have this guy hit hard, hit first, and you can knock out a lot of extra mass. And then you bring in some of your not as good ships. So for one less point, the cannons are a lot worse, uh, but it does allow you to have that extra guaranteed damage. So it's still going to potentially do ram damage, and you're also going to be doing your crew and mast from the rammed ship ability. Now, the way this is worded, I read this as only doing it once a turn. So if there was some way that you were able to remain unpinned uh, and, and move again in the same turn, you wouldn't be able to use this twice. Also note that if you remain unpinned, you're not getting pinned for this to trigger. So uh, really, you're only going to be able to achieve this once per turn per ship, even with extra actions. So we'll say that this is another one that's in our fleet, but there's a couple of limited edition versions as well as this one right here that are turtle ships with this ability. Now the turtle ships have the benefit of they have these hull panels here that will make it so that if they're being shot at, they will not be taking damage from that. They'll just lose the hull panels instead of their actual mast. You also get the benefit of they cannot be boarded. So if you put something like a helmsman on here to help it ram faster, or a reroller to help reroll that ram roll, you can just ram and not get boarded back. Now, if you don't put any crew on here, there's no real risk to you boarding them initially. But if you can go and ram them and you have your crew on there, you don't have to declare a boarding party after the ram, and neither can they due to the turtle ship ability. As long as it has its hull panels, turtle ships cannot be boarded. So that's a real benefit to these where we have some S plus S ships and there's a few of these that are L movement. You can put a helmsman on there and it's going to be safe. They're not going to be able to board you back. And with, with only one mast, you're not really going to have great defense on some of the larger ships if they try to board you. But just looking at this, if I were to put a captain on USS Maryland and just ram with all of these, there's a pretty good chance that, I, that I'm going to eliminate four or five masts off of one ship. And this is guaranteed three masts if you can ram them. So ramming, I mean, you've got S plus S movement on each of these. In a higher point game, you could put something that lets you do an extra move action uh, or take an action from another, another ship. And if you throw a captain on the ones that have decent cannons, you can even get in a few extra hits after you've rammed them. So that's kind of the fun strategy that I've put together. I've used this to great effect, especially on a ship like USS Maryland, where you get the ram damage, the pin damage, and then it has good cannons to follow it up with. So it's really a, a surprising powerhouse when you're able to do that. And it's a lot of fun if you can put five or six of these ships together and just swarm a really big ship and knock all of its masts off. Now, the last piece, as I would say, is if you were to include some extra just ram fodder, as I would call it, you can throw in some of the one, two, or three point ships that are quick. They can come in after you've done the initial guaranteed damage with these, and there's only two or three masts left. And then you can make your ram rolls from them and hopefully eliminate those last couple of masts. Not to mention, if they shoot at you and they can only hit a one-point ship, uh, it's not that big a deal if you lose it. So those are some other options that you could throw in there, but I really enjoy using this to guarantee getting some damage if you can ram them.